Hello everyone, welcome to today's class. I hope you could go through what we discussed in the last class. We will briefly look at uh, we, what we did and what we discussed in the last class. Uh, now we looked at the uh, asymmetric reduction part where we discussed uh, William Knowles Nobel uh, Prize winning work where he um, developed uh, an industrial method for the synthesis of L-DOPA so starting from an enamide like this where asymmetric hydrogenation was done using uh, a rhodium catalyst uh, where ligand was this dipam and this led to the synthesis of L-DOPA in a high enantiomeric purity. Then uh, we also discussed how um, Noyori's Nobel uh, winning work uh, using binaps as chiral ligands. So we saw two binaps, one of this and its mirror image. One of them is R, the other one is S configurated. And uh, these uh, binap uh, ligands were very useful in leading to very high enantiomeric purity of the uh, products uh, wherever these ligands were used. For example, uh, isomerization of uh, olefins um, was done and uh, this, for this kind of uh, olefin which had a, a diethyl amino group at the end could be isomerized to an enamine where this uh, new asymmetric center uh, is being generated. And uh, if we use R uh, by NAP, then we get uh, the configuration of the asymmetric center being like this. And if we took uh, S by NAP then of course we have this asymmetric center uh, configuration opposite to the above one. And uh, this kind of uh, isomerization of olefins as one can imagine that we can do the hydrolysis of these uh, enamines and get the corresponding aldehyde. This is what was utilized uh, in the synthesis of uh, menthol uh, by Takasago company. And the beta pinene was eventually converted uh, to this uh, minus menthol using uh, step of reactions involving uh, one of them being uh, isomerization of olefins uh, using uh, rhodium binab catalyst. And uh, towards the end, uh, we saw that uh, a ruthenium catalyst of uh, this kind can be used for the reduction of uh, these enones to the corresponding allylic alcohols uh, uh, in the presence of hydrogen and uh, isopropanol. And uh, this gave uh, the corresponding allylic alcohol in 90 percent enantiomeric purity which is a good vitamin E building block. So this was one of the uh, methods of reduction of ketones. So we will try to look at in today's class uh, what other methods are there. Uh, for the reduction of ketones to enantiomedically pure alcohols. If we look at uh, various traditional methods of uh, enantioselective reduction of ketones, what basically is done uh, is uh, modify uh, say sodium borohydride or uh, lithium aluminum hydride uh, or dibol uh, for example uh, into uh, uh, some uh, sort of uh, uh, reducing agents in which we have a chiral uh, ligand attached to it. See for example, one can make uh, sodium boro uh, tri uh, alkoxy uh, hydride uh, where the R group of the uh, alkoxy path is chiral. Uh, in a similar fashion one can also make the lithium aluminum tri alkoxy hydride where again we have the R as a chiral uh, ligand. And of course one can also do the uh, same with the uh, dibol. And uh, one of the very interesting methods developed by uh, Brown was the use of this uh, particular um, borane compound which has a chlorine attached to it. 
and this particular path is, is coming from a pinene part. So, it is a chiral uh, molecule and uh, uh, these uh, kind of reducing agents have been found to, to convert a ketone uh, which is a prochiral ketone. So, if we take R and R1 we expect the reduction to give uh, optically active either this or this uh, one of them or one of them being major uh, optically active alcohol. Now these, these reductions are uh, straightforward reductions of the ketone uh, to the corresponding alcohol. We need not discuss that in detail. Uh, of course, in the case of uh, uh, dibol uh, which is uh, modified by a chiral uh, ligand would of course behave uh, uh, not as a nucleophile to start with, but once it has uh, uh, have a, co a coordination with the oxygen of the ketone then of course it behaves like a nucleophile. But in all these cases the enantiomeric uh, uh, purity of this or the uh, extent of uh, asymmetric induction depends upon various factors of course including the, uh, the chirality of the R uh, ligand. In this particular case uh, when uh, this uh, boron uh, attaches uh, to the uh, ketone, so you have a attachment to the ketone which is a prochiral ketone and of course uh, you have this coordination like this and it is attached to uh, the path which is shown here. So we have this path which is here and this path is essentially this path. So what is exactly happening is, uh, uh, is something that we can write it in one step here. Uh, for example, if we have uh, written in this fashion, uh, then we can expect the um, uh, boron from here. Uh, we have written only one part of it and we can write the other part which uh, is attached to this same thing. Uh, now we need to uh, uh, have the um, attachment of the um, boron, uh, it will be something like this. Uh, here boron and chlorine and of course uh, we will have attachment of the other part being here. So uh, one expects that uh, what will happen is uh, when this has a coordination to the oxygen then uh, we generate a kind of uh, delta positive here and a delta negative here and then this uh, hydrogen uh, attaches as a hydride to the carbon of the carbonyl group and this goes in here and this again comes back here. So uh, this allows the reduction uh, to be completed, you, so you have R, R1 and of course the hydrogen whichever way the hydrogen has to go, say assume hydrogen comes in this way, so then boron would be attached to the oxygen and we have this particular part attached it here. So uh, once then of course we hydrolyze it uh, under basic conditions or under acidic conditions and then we get the corresponding chiral alcohol. Uh, and during this process what releases from here is, uh, uh, is very interesting is something that one can think about it is uh, basically it is nothing but a pinene. So this is pinene, uh, this is alpha pinene uh, because the double bond is uh, internal double bond and this is alpha pinene that comes off. So uh, the, uh, the uh, reducing agent is uh, chlorodiisopenyl camphenyl borane and uh, what is uh, uh, interesting is that this the chirality of this particular path uh, is uh, guiding the hydride transfer to the carbonyl group and then the asymmetric reduction leads to this particular chiral alcohol which is of very high enantiomeric purity. So these are the uh, various uh, reducing agents that are uh, needed 
for the reduction of ketone to the alcohol. But as you can see that uh, the hydrogen which is being transferred to the carbonyl group as a hydride is essentially coming from the modified uh, reducing agent. That means uh, whichever one we take it, we need at least one mole equivalent of uh, it because uh, each uh, molecule will deliver one hydride. So it is uh, a bit uh, expensive in the terms of um, chiral uh, ligand to be used and therefore there have been efforts to uh, modify various reducing agents and uh, see that if uh, the chiral part uh, of the ligand uh, which is uh, uh, being used as uh, chiral ligand to modify the reducing agent whether it can be in a catalytic fashion or not. In this context there is a very interesting chiral catalyst introduced by Cori which is known as ox azaburilidine catalyst or Cori bakshi shibata catalyst which is useful for the enantioselective reductions of ketones. The structure of such a catalyst is uh, shown here which has a bicyclic 5-5 uh, system in which there is a nitrogen, boron and oxygen in a contiguous fashion. Now this particular type of uh, Kori Bakshi Shibata catalyst can be prepared from either S-proline or R-proline. Now because there are two 5-member rings which are attached to each other, the shape of this particular uh, uh, Kori Bakshi Shibata catalyst it will be of a bowl type in which one side of the bowl is uh, sterically hindered and the other side is sterically free. Now depending on whether one uses S proline or R proline, the side of the, uh, the bowl would be differently accessible. How is this particular catalyst made? We will see from Say for example, we start with S proline, then we react with phosgene, which uh, converts the NH to NCOCl, and then we use triethylamine to deprotonate the carboxylic acid to the corresponding carboxylate, which then reacts with this particular carbamoyl moiety to form this bicyclic uh, intermediate. Now this bicyclic intermediate is then treated with uh, phenyl magnesium chloride. Now phenyl magnesium chloride preferentially interacts onto this particular carbonyl carbon because this carbonyl carbon is uh, uh, less uh, electrophilic because there are two heteroatoms which are on the either side of this particular carbonyl carbon. Therefore, this carbonyl carbon is more electrophilic for Gignard reagent to attack. When this Gignard reagent attacks, we get this kind of first intermediate which then breaks to release carbon dioxide and of course NMGCL will be forming and also the corresponding ketone will be liberated. Now with the excess of phenyl magnesium chloride being around, this ketone would again react with the phenyl magnesium chloride to form the corresponding OMGCL. Of course, that has to be neutralized and followed by uh, basification to release this particular amino alcohol. Now, this uh, amino alcohol then uh, reacts with trialkyl uh, boroxene and there is a formation of a bond between nitrogen, boron and oxygen. That means this particular part of the uh, trialkyl boroxene uh, gets inserted between nitrogen and the oxygen to liberate the Kori Bakshi Shibata catalyst. Now as you can see that we have not lost any uh, asymmetric center or we have not done any epimerization. Therefore, the enantial purity remains uh, close to 99 percent. So, this particular Kori Bakshi Shibata catalyst can then be utilized uh, for the reduction of ketones along with uh, a reducing agent such as diborane or any other boron uh, reducing agent. 
Now when uh, we take such a uh, bicyclic uh, ligand and react with uh, say borane, so the nitrogen uh, lone pair of electron from here uh, interacts with the electrophilic uh, borane and forms this uh, intermediate and this is the intermediate that is very important. Now what we have here is this R group, this R group is a very crucial uh, group and uh, uh, what happens is that since the bowl the hydrogen at the junction is, uh, is alpha oriented, so the bowl is uh, the major bulk of the bowl is uh, like this, it is going to be uh, uh, pointing out up and the hydrogen is pointing below. So basically the bowl is like this. So uh, what happens is that since the hydrogen is pointing down because the bowl is pointing up, the major part of the bowl and therefore the nitrogen attaches to the borane from the alpha side, that means the lower side, from the same side as uh, the hydrogen is. Now we have the uh, only now electrophilic part that is left out is this particular boron and uh, we have the carbonyl group which can have uh, one small group and one a large group. So uh, the oxygen of the carbonyl group comes in contact with the electrophilic boron and has this uh, chelation or the coordination. Now at that stage there are uh, two possibilities of uh, orienting, one of course as I have shown it here and the other possibility is that the oxygen attaches uh, in this fashion and we have our uh, large group coming here and the small group coming here. So uh, what it means that, that this particular R group which is pointing upward because the oxygen of, of the carbonyl group from the lower side has attached and the, um, the steric hindrance caused by the R group would uh, allow uh, which direction the uh, carbonyl group would be oriented. Since this R group is beta oriented therefore the small R part that the group which is smaller orients towards the beta side to avoid steric hindrance. If uh, we had put this kind of uh, uh, orientation then what would have happened is that there is a severe steric interaction between this R and this R large group that is the larger group attached to the carbonyl. So therefore uh, in such a situation the carbonyl group orients in such a way that the large group goes behind and the small group comes towards us which is kind of uh, more towards the R group. In that situation then the hydride is transferred and the way I have shown it here and suppose if RL group is going behind and RS group is coming towards us, RS means small substitution and the RL is the larger substitution, then the hydrogen is transferred into the plane and therefore we get the um, intermediate of this kind. Of course we can uh, use the remaining hydrogens also and eventually get 2 or 3 and finally upon workup with, uh, with a basic workup uh, we of course will get the uh, boron oxygen bond cleaved and the, the hydroxy group would uh, come, re be released and this way uh, we have converted uh, carbonyl group to the alcohol and with the predictable geometry of the newly formed asymmetric carbon atom and that is the configuration that is what is seen and if there are many many examples that have been done uh, say for example if this acetophenone is taken room temperature in THF and we carry out this particular uh, reduction then we get this alcohol in 97 percent enantiopathic purity. Of course in, during this process uh, this particular chiral ligand which is what uh, modifies uh, the reduction uh, part of the borane into such an intermediate. So essentially this is the reducing agent uh, which is a modified reducing agent and uh, therefore uh, the, uh, this particular chiral ligand is only used in a small amount 1 or 2 or uh, uh, mole percent and whereas we use one equivalent of the uh, corresponding reducing agent.
So as we can understand that uh, the borane would not reduce uh, uh, the ketone unless it is activated to make it as uh, a nucleophilic uh, reducing agent and that is exactly what is done by this uh, oxazaboledirine uh, by modification. Now here we have a negative charge on the boron and thus the, uh, the reduction occurs of the ketone via this kind of chelation. So this is a very nice uh, method where only catalytic amount of a chiral ligand is used uh, and one equivalent of uh, borane is used as a reducing agent. So uh, Corey uh, also showed, Corey is the one who is a professor at Harvard University and uh, 1990 uh, Nobel uh, Prize uh, winner and what he has also uh, shown that if we take uh, a ketone of this kind where there is a trichloromethyl uh, uh, group attached to it and we use uh, borane which is a catechol borane. We can use uh, different types of uh, uh, borane uh, molecules uh, depending on uh, what uh, kind of enantiomeric uh, purity is given. Uh, so uh, we can also change uh, this path like for example catechol for a borane is uh, useful in cases where BH3 may be interfering with the double bond or amide. For example, if um, there are extra hydrogens attached after the, uh, uh, the ligand has um, coordinated with the borane path, then uh, those extra hydrogens for example in the case of BH3 would, would uh, also affect some other part of the molecule if that gets affected. At the same time uh, the uh, modification of the borane can be also done in such a way that uh, gives more steric uh, bulk to the reducing agent. So uh, we use this particular part so we can also modify this uh, of based on uh, initial uh, Kori Bakshi Shibata preparation and uh, when this reaction was done onto this ketone uh, they got this particular uh, optically active alcohol which uh, was treated with uh, sodium azide in the presence of a base like uh, sodium hydroxide. So you can imagine that uh, this uh, epoxide which is formed is basically nothing but uh, if we can imagine that we have here molecule like this and you have an O minus uh, becoming uh, because of uh, the two uh, uh, the, the OH group which is there and the, the base takes up the proton from the uh, OH and uh, generates an anion and this anion then internally attacks and removes one of the chlorines to form this particular uh, dichloro epoxide. And this dichloro epoxide then under the conditions uh, is uh, attacked by the azide group and uh, in uh, the way I have shown the arrows the uh, nucleophile attacks onto the um, uh, carbon atom which uh, is um, uh, asymmetric uh, and then there is a loss of uh, chlorine and eventually forming this uh, acid chloride which under the condition uh, because there is a basic condition is hydrolyzed. Of course we can write the configuration of this in this fashion and, and uh, in this fashion whichever we like it and then finally when we do the uh, hydrogenation using a normal um, uh, palladium catalyst then the hydrogenation leads to alpha amino acids. So this is basically um, a very uh, convenient and a fantastic way of converting uh, a simple uh, ketone uh, of this kind uh, to uh, an alpha amino acid of this type. Now here depending on what the R group is, uh, this R group uh, coming from the, uh, of course I must emphasize that this R group is different from this R group. So basically one can write here is that this being as R1 to distinguish from this R. So uh, we can imagine that we can also get this alpha amino acid with a different uh, configuration that means we can think about getting say you have an amino group here coming uh, as NH3 plus and you have hydrogen coming like this 
and you have the carboxylate ion. So, this is also possible if we use the other um, uh, uh, enantiomerically pure Cori Bakshishi Bata catalyst. That means if we start with S proline, we get, say, for example, this kind of uh, alpha amino acid, and we start with R proline, we can get this kind of amino acids. And therefore, we have the possibility of getting both the enantiomers of the same alpha amino acid. And thus, one of them would of course be um, natural or we have a possibility of uh, making unnatural uh, amino acids, alpha amino acids of both uh, enantiomeric uh, type. And this is something very useful because unnatural amino acids are important for making different types of peptides or uh, proteins uh, to study their effect on in the biological systems. So, uh, this is how uh, it, this particular uh, reduction has been done. Uh, so, we will stop it today at this stage and uh, we will uh, take up the uh, other aspects of uh, asymmetric uh, reactions in the next class. Till then you could go through this uh, whatever I have discussed it today and uh, be ready for the next class. Till then bye and thank you.